Decide which player will be eliminated first in this group, Group B, in the GSL Code S. Yeah, and truthfully, it could be either one of these That's guys. Right. Dark CVZ is very good, but so is Suze. Even recently beat him in a game, I think maybe it was Shoutcraft. A ZVZ, a matchup with so much volatility. Yeah. Uh, and in a very, what could be a very short best of three. This game is played on a knife's edge. Yeah, it, it really is. And Sue is a great aggressive Zerg. I generally like to give edges to aggressive Zergs in ZBZ because, you know, on, on the turn of a dime, you can just kill somebody. You, you know, you have the right failing in the right place, so the lings get in, and bam, it's over. There was one GSL where I believe Sue had to take out three incredible Zergs in one yeah. season to, to continue to advance. And, um, that was, of course, one of the seasons that he ended up getting second place. Yeah. One of his four seasons he got second place. Yeah, I know. Seriously. Like, I, I don't quite remember exactly that, but I bet I can imagine what it was like the Zerg players whining then about how Zerg's really, well, I mean, maybe, you know, ZVP and ZVT aren't so bad, but ZVC are that matchup. Oh, ZVT, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so the map lineup is Daybreak, Abyssal Reef, and I didn't get to read the third map because that graphic changed. So it's a mystery, guys. We don't know. Mystery map. Mystery it's map. It's going to be a randomly generated map. My goodness. I'm like, oh no, it's a Warcraft map. They have to gather wood. No one knows how to do build orders <laughs> Drones here. Drones can't cut trees. <laughs> All right, Tasteless. Here we go. Our Daybreak. Team. I don't know who wins this. I think Dark, I think his play style is a little bit more robust, but Sue, he's pretty crazy. Expect anything. In the upper right, in the blue, he is Dark. Dark side. <laughs> in the bottom left, in the red. Sue. Nothing for him. So sue me. <laughs> oh, God, so bad. Mm. So, mirror build so far. <laughs> yeah. Which gives us a lot to talk about. Artosis, tell us what we need to know. <laughs> you know, I was thinking this earlier when I was when I was making fun of you earlier yeah. about how like, what if we took someone that literally knows nothing about StarCraft, nothing at all, okay, and we just teach them a couple phrases and what everything is on the production tab. Yeah. Oh, I would be out of a job. And how to how to. <laughs> I how to say, Oh, both going for spawning pools. Guys, I'm not going to be here. Pretty soon automation will have replaced me. Me and all the truck drivers in North America, we're going to be bad. That's true. You know, uh, driving jobs, one of the biggest jobs in uh, in North America. I'm going to be up there talking to Donald Trump. Like, they took my job, Donald Trump. He's like, we're going to bring their casting back to America. Somebody, all these guys are like, we just want to mine all the coal in Virginia. And then I'm like, I just want to cast a GSL without an Android taking my work. <laughs> hmm. Well, Remember we talked about this a long time ago where we, we could have gotten like a keyboard with laugh tracks? Yeah, no, I just like in the 90s soundboard. where all, all bad all bad comedies had like, you could like hit piano keys and it would make different laughter so there's the dumb thing. people who are watching would know what was funny. You give me like a 16 button soundboard. Yeah. Okay. You give me 14 tasteless phrases and two fart noises and I will make the best GSL cast you ever <laughs> saw. Okay. That's all I need, man. <laughs> Yeah, no, my days are numbered for sure. I'm definitely obsolete pretty soon here. I like hit a button in the top right, in the red, and then I hit another button. Our Zerg player. <laughs> and then like it's a downtime, so I just. <laughs> I was like, whoa! One more button, you go battle toads. And people were like, oh my god, it really is tasteless. Yeah. 
Well, they're both going for the Banelings Nest. It's it's been pretty much beard builds from here on out. We're gonna yeah. see if uh, if Dark does get a third hatch. Looks like there's a drone yeah. headed southbound to do just that. Just slightly slower. That's fine. Whatevs. He's still gonna get it. Now, uh, this is where you watch for who is going to make a plume of Zerglings and actually put some pressure on. Because with both of them taking the third base, if you do get that pressure on, yeah, it's going to be dark. Uh, there is a possibility. You know, you get those connections. Your opponent droned a little bit too much. You could cancel that third hatch, and that's a big deal. Yeah, and it's um, it's an uphill fight for that player on two bases from there on out. Yeah. Um, and we don't see really drones coming up here yet for Sue. He might try to hold this off with just a few banelings, but... Got to be careful. Dark's pretty good with his control. Yeah, especially concerning you can try to run things in the natural as well. So you need some defense at the natural, some way to prevent the Zerglings from just kind of running by and, and wrecking you. But you also have to keep this third hatch alive. Yeah, he made it a little bit quicker, but if he loses it, he is so far behind. Okay. The Link's yeah, coming down it. now, zoning out that one Bane Link. Looks like the Bane Link is going to be assassinated. For just two Links. Yeah. Low, low price of two Zerglings. Very good value. Meanwhile, whoa! Whoa, indeed. Oh, my God. All oh, my God. Almost connected. He almost missed. Yeah, he missed the Bane Link trade. Ooh. Trying to get those two Bane Links to connect to the other two. And look at this. Now whoa! he's getting around the Queens. Dark is, like, looking fantastic. Yeah, he is. Oh, good transfuse with the Bane Link connect. But look, he retreats immediately with the Links. Like, perfectly done. Yeah. The way that he's spreading everything out, running around with the Bane Links, getting those extra connects. This is good play by Dark. More Lings uh, continuing to be produced right now for the time being here by Sue. Sue's Roach Warren is near completion, a little bit ahead of Dark. As far as drone count goes, it is Dark with a minor lead. Well, that got evened out moments ago, so yeah. I guess it's pretty much even for now. Oh, and now Dark's going to take Oh, now Dark's lead. up there. Let's just keep talking about the drones the whole game. Like, oh my god, now he's ahead of drones. <laughs> now he's ahead of drones. Oh, hold up. Oh, Speaking of drones, boom, Jeez. seven go down. Taking out a little bit under half of all the workers in that area. Yeah, that's really rough. Now we have dark up 11 drones right now. You, the roach warren is up, which means that, you know, you start getting a few roaches out and suddenly these Ling Bane attacks aren't really going to do that much. The sp uh, not the spire, but <laughs> the spire's on the way for Sue. I'm like, wow, how do you do that without that layer? Finish? He's so good. Yeah. But uh, Layer is on the way, rather. And so we are beginning that tech. Things have calmed down a little bit. It may be Sue that's now going to be able to apply uh, some more pressure mm. here onto Dark Space. But with seven Roaches about to pop out, I don't think he's going to get anything done. Like, Roach Bane beats Bling Bane any day. Whoa! Nicely done. Woo! <laughs> wow, we turn around. So he zoned him out pretty effectively. Uh, we do have the plus one range attack now coming here for Sue. Yeah, he does get that started quicker, and he does have uh, that the the layer on the way. So that's going to finish up. He can get his we're, roach speed, but we're going to uh, roach ravager here from dark. Yeah, it's going to be ravager with a lot of links. I'm for sorry, ravager and stuff, and That's what I meant to say. Yeah, in the <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> No, I believe you. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what the unit pictures are in the production tab, guys. Oh my God. This is why I was talking about teaching someone what the unit pictures on the production tab are. Oh, my God. I'm like, Tasis, oh, no. it's year seven. It's year seven. You've casted more StarCraft II than anybody. Like, it's really not That's what that I mean, guys. hard. That's what I meant, guys. Sorry. <laughs> Just like a uh, hold up. These legs are actually doing a lot of damage with the counterattack right now from Dark. Definitely with a little bit more muscle. The Roach is coming up, but Banelings here to answer. Ooh, those Banelings starting to connect on these Roaches. Not doing the greatest job, but bruising yeah. them up a little bit. I don't know if there's enough meat in front of these Ravagers to actually hmm. suffice. Yeah, this could be rough because that plus one attack finishing up and the fact that he's going to have Roach speed. Ling Linga Ravager is not going to do so well because he's going to be two-shotting the Lings. And not to mention the Ravagers are horrible at retreating. Yeah, They're no, pretty they much always going to die in any matchup if you're running away and it's just a few Ravagers. Mm. They usually don't get back home. Yeah, that's, that is going to be a rough one. But it looks like he's going to run away right now while his Lings are trying to get some harass on. A few drones are going down, but this is now Sue's moment. With that plus one, with that speed upgrade, he can push out with the Roaches and try to get something done for sure. Now, will he get something done? 
That remains to be seen. <laughs> you are the greatest commentator in the world, Artosis. <laughs> he is going to push across the map onto the right side. We just side. don't know, guys. <laughs> Until it happens, anything could happen. <laughs> we could lose power in the building. Who knows? The replay file could be corrupted and we have to start over. It's like any, you know, it's crazy. The Roaches and Lings, a few Ravagers, <laughs> headed over here to the uh, center right location. Mm. It I seems like Dark may have enough with the rally points coming out. A meteor could hit the Earth. Like, we only watched like 14% of the sky taste. It's like, who knows, man? <laughs> he's coming. <laughs> Hold on, he's coming up now. Uh, Queen's in the back here for some potential transfuses. A ah, decent amount of roaches here, and we are very close to his rally point, so Dark may be able to end up holding, but his supply is drastically lower. The Roach is getting some real value down here right now. Sue's arc beginning to swallow up. Dark side, uh, but with a few more units now coming up here from the bottom. Dark trying to maintain. I don't know if it's going to work, and Sue closes it out with a 1-0. GG. That's a big deal right there. Sue taking game number one. Uh, Dark, you know, he had some good early aggression, then followed it up with that, that Ling Ravager play, but it just didn't really work out. It was mostly just Ravager push. The Lings never really came into it. Uh, as Sue, or yeah, Sue was doing some counter harassment and whatnot, but not working, man. Like he, no. he kind of pulled out a game that kind of looked like that in the round of 32, but it wasn't against Sue. It was against a lesser Zerg. What was it, Losira, I think? Or it's you like Losira right. is very good, but I think everyone would agree that Sue is a bit above him, you know. And Sue is not putting up that crap. Never no underestimate Sue crap today, tasteless. Dark. Might have gotten top two in the world, losing only to Bjorn, the god of Terran in 2016. Dark, the greatest Zerg of 2016, but guess who doesn't care? His name is Sue. And he might be knocking Dark out of this group. Sue has yet to win a GSL Code S, but I'll tell you one thing, it's pretty hard to stop him from getting to the finals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even if your name is Dark, yeah. he does not give a damn. We're now going in to this next match. Can Dark recover? Artosis, the Sam Papa Lobcaster, is going to bring <laughs> us the analysis to find out who is the greater Zerg player in the GSL Code S. In the upper left, in the blue. Dark. Or Zerg player, one of two. <laughs> the power of the dark side. He's trying to bring Sue over to the dark side. <laughs> In the bottom right, he is Sue, the Sooth Lord. There can only be two. Do you feel the hate in your face? <laughs> Sue's like, no. <laughs> Dark's like, I am your father. Cuts his hand off. He's like, ah, oh, my mouse hand. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. You'll get a robot arm <sighs> by the end of episode four. No, five. Excuse me. Would we let him into the GSL with a robot arm? Is the question. That's a good question. Well, we let innovation, and he has two of them, so whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got a robot mind the way he plays the game. Mm. Oh, tassels. Look at all the fish. Look at all these fish. Let's talk about this. Are we underwater? Yes. I love how the overlords still fly, though. They swim. They're like jellyfish. They're like floating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Something like that. I guess you should be able to see through overlords like they're jellyfish so you can see what's you in know, the You here, know, here's the thing. It actually, the whole idea works in my mind that we could be underwater with all the units except for the mutas. <laughs> if they can fly they're through like space swimming? by flapping their wings, they yeah, sure as hell true. can fly through water. Then again, the zealots, you know, running underwater, that's that's impressive. Well, I'm, it, the thing, that's a great workout right there. Yeah. Low res, like... You know, it's good on your joints and stuff. That's true. The fact that they go at the same speed is what's so impressive. That's, that really blows my mind yeah, away. Yeah, that's crazy. And there is a shark. There it is, a shark. Look when out. When did this Look out. map nah, be? Nah, nah. Oh, this map it. would be more realistic if everything just moved like it was under time warps. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like everything. <laughs> I guess things can swim pretty fast, though. Yeah. So that shark is somewhere... If we just zoomed out enough, we would see it, that shadow. That would be pretty awesome, actually, because there are ways to, like, zoom upwards. You could zoom up, and suddenly a shark is in the way, and you can't really do that on this map because there's a giant shark up there casting yeah. a shadow. And then a Zerg gets neural parasite and shoots it on the shark, and we're like, oh, my God. This is crazy. <laughs> 
It's like that scene where the giant Zerg ship comes to Earth and assaults like Korhal or whatever, right? Yeah. But instead, it's a giant shark and just comes down and bites the Nexus, and the Nexus blows One up. of the hatcheries is bleeding and smells blood in the water. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> comes over there. Yeah. Oh, man. That would be really fun. Yeah. I think someone should make that map. That's right. It would be completely unfair, though, because Zerg is the only one with bleeding buildings. Yeah, that's Ross okay. They're blood. both shark. It's totally fair. Yeah, <laughs> totally fair. Yeah. It's like it's like a very serious tournament, the GSL. But we're like, well, what we do in ZVZ is we turn it to Smash Brothers with items on. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so the double Evo chamber wall has come up here. We're already having um, the different branches of Zerg builds. Mm -hmm. We have Sue going for double Evo to get the upgrades, having a Roach War in here yeah. for an assisted wall. Whereas Dark is going to go for a third hatchery. Yeah, and this is this is like kind of a classic battle in ZBZ. The one player that's going to get Roach speed in the, in the uh, earlier upgrade, and he's going to be on one less base, one less hatch, right? So you're trying to utilize the extra larva and the slightly extra economy that you're sometimes going to have with this as uh, the side that Dark is on to actually defend against your opponent here. Now look at that, Carapace upgrade on the way for Dark, and this kind of points towards him going into uh, a Ling Ravager play again. Because otherwise, like, if you wanted to just go Roach, you'd be getting range attack. Makes sense. Yeah. Kind of nifty. Now we have the third hatchery, albeit later than Dark's. So he is going to get that up. He's not going to stay back on just two bases. So that starts around the time that Dark's hatchery finishes. And we're, be see we're beginning to see the roaches get produced out here. Drone count currently 41 to 42, so not too much of a difference. Mm -hmm. Layers starting for Dark now. Dark has been making roaches for a bit, but there's some heavy, heavy roach production coming out of Sue. As that plus one and speed finish up, he's definitely going to be moving across the map and seeing what poking he can get done, especially after he just scouted that third being done. He knows exactly what type of place he's in at the moment. All right, so... These guys both gearing up for a potential attack here. It would seem to me Dark might be the first one to try to initiate that. We have the Ravagers now coming up. Generally, when you see the Ravagers making, that can mean that they're going to be attacking pretty soon. Mm. Otherwise, you can spend those minerals uh, in a different way. The Ravagers make pretty fast. They're kind of like Banelings. Yeah, they, you know, they you can pretty much make them in real time. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you do when the roach is under attack. This game is so good, Artosis. I would I would play this game even if it was just the text version of the game. I send my roaches across the map. I send my roaches map. across the map. He has a concave I'm of like, roaches. Make more roaches than him. I type <laughs> that in. Whoa. Whoa, hold on. This this angle here, these roaches don't really have an avenue of an escape. Yeah, that means the Crosa Biles oh can land God. so well. And Sue is in some trouble right now, I think. He is bringing up more roaches. Well, hold up. There's that was about so many as roaches. good uh, engagement as really Dark could have hoped for. He even has the plus one care pace now. So no longer is Lings being two shotted. Okay, Still. Uh, however, he comes up here to target down the Ravagers. Great firing. That's just enough roaches to one shot. Uh, those Ravagers, the Lings do come up, and as Artosa said, armor certainly helping out in this fight. Whoa, we had a roach body fly by the camera. Good yeah. thing we dodged that. You know, even with the extra larva boost that Dark got, he just doesn't have enough units right now. Ling's popping out and trying to deal with this. He will be able to surround and kill off the rest of these roaches, but more and more roaches are being produced for Sue back at home. Looks like Sue just came from a time machine and you know, Wings of Liberty, he yeah. comes up to this base, he's like, what the hell are those? He sees these Ravagers and just starts to have, you know, has to start killing him. Okay, this, I, I like what I'm seeing here, right? Because Sue just threw up a Spire as soon as he held this. He realizes that the Roach battle is, or Dark rather, I'm sorry, threw up the Spire. He realizes that the Roach battle is not something he's going to win. Sue already has his plus two on the way. Uh, the Ling, the, like he already lost too many units and too long on his Econ to make this strategy work anymore. So if he can just kind of sit tight, button up, and get into mutas, then he can force us into a very long game. But that's the problem. Like, how do you actually do that? With this plus two attack finishing, he's two-shotting lings once again. The lings are not going to be useful. You're sitting here with inferior roaches against superior roaches. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. You are a poet. More roaches are going to come up here. This may be too much muscle for Dark to handle. Note how he's moving the uh, Roach's background, and for, hopefully for an interception, um, to try to hit those Lings. He's actually arcing these Roaches out in such a great way mm. so that he's going to block anything that's going to try to come back. He's at him. trawling the Abyssal Reef. 
crawling? Yeah. I don't know the word. What it's is that? like when you drop nets to the bottom and just get Ooh, all the fish. You're good. Yeah. All right, here comes that big attack right here, right now. No Ravagers, and perhaps too many Roaches here for Sue. Way too Every much. Roach able to get those shots off as they skirt forward and begin to wipe out Dark's army. Dark getting second place at BlizzCon. Will not be able to get top eight Holy in crap. this season of the GSL. That GG. is wild. That is wild wow. that Dark is out. Beyond died in the round of 32. Dark died in the round of 16. These are two of the big favorites, two of the best players in the whole world, and they're already out of this season of Code S. Sue, on the other hand, is going to move up turtleneck and all to fight Classic. Our opinions of StarCraft 2 pros from 2016, we're going to have to shed that like snakeskin because it's a different beast here in 2017. Well, I tell you what, right now, Sue is wearing some dark boots. And somewhere, Ryung is wearing some Gyun boots, man. That's right. Uh, he took those nerds and turned them into nerd pelts. All right. That was uh, that was pretty impressive by Sue. Just some very solid play overall. Dark getting a little bit fancy. Didn't have the units that he really needed. He even hit amazing Krosa Biles against those roaches that were yeah. stuck. But it wasn't enough at the end of the day. He just wasn't making his units at the right time. That means it's going to be Sue versus Innovation. These two guys. Classic. Excuse me, Sue versus Classic. What? Sue versus Classic. Sorry, I wasn't really here for those other games. Um, going on into our final match. We will be back in five minutes. After that, we'll see who is the last survivor in tonight's GSL Code.